Welcome to Teen Youth Summit, where we highlight youth programs and issues facing today's youth. This is Teen Youth Summit. Greetings and welcome to Teen Youth Summit, where we highlight youth programs and issues facing today's youth, ultimately providing committed outreach to the future of our community's youth and young adults. I'm your host, Tony Randolph, and thank you for joining us. Today's show is called Ways to Stop Youth Violence. We'll take a look at the benefits of enrolling youths into programs that will encourage positive and critical thinking skills, along with promoting self-respect and self-esteem. Today, we are going to share with you three stories First, a local martial arts program, Successful Youth Initiative. Then, we'll hear about a trailblazing youth ministry. And in our last segment, we'll take a look at some of the major challenges facing our youth in today's society. This is Teen Youth Summit, Ways to Stop Youth Violence. Our first story is about a martial arts program right here in Washington, D.C. that is taking huge steps to prepare youth for life challenges teaching children basic traits like goal setting and self-esteem at a young age, which can have a massive impact on what that child accomplishes later in life. Kuk Suwon motivates children and teaches confidence, physical fitness, and etiquette, all of which serves to help them reach their fullest potential. Let's take a look. My name is Russell Moore. Um, Pusa Abanem is my title, which means third degree black belt. I'm the chief instructor of the Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia area. What do we need? We need, we need more practice, sir. Kuksuwan Creek. As a member of Kuksuwan, I pledge to obey the rules of the association and to conduct myself in accordance with the true spirit of martial arts. I pledge to go to my country and to promote the development of a better society. I pledge to work together with all classes of people without regard to politics, race, or religion. I pledge to promote international goodwill and strive for world peace in the practice of martial arts. Kok Su Wan stands for Korean Martial Arts Association. So it, um, this is traditional Korean martial arts. It takes the traditional Korean martial arts and puts it all into one system. So we're not just focusing on one aspect of martial arts, we focus on all aspects. We do self-defense techniques and a lot of the things that we do helps them with their confidence because once you learn how to do something and you become good at it, that helps you in all areas of your life. So the amount of things that we do here in Kok Sul when it comes to weapons training, when it comes to forms training, when it comes to technique training, self-defense, that gives them the, the knowledge and the power to do everything else outside of, of martial arts. One, it can be beneficial just by learning how to use your body. Um, you know, there's an obesity problem here in the area and in Washington, D.C. So aftercare programs help with getting you moving. It helps with, your, with exercising and those type of things, which, again, if you feel better about yourself, then you'll feel good about doing whatever it is you want to do outside of martial arts also. One of the main things that we teach here. So if you're disciplined and respectful at the same time, then when it comes to doing things outside of martial arts as far as, um, let's say, later on in life getting a job. You know, the skills that you learn here make you disciplined enough to do the things that you need to do outside of martial arts also, not just when you're in class saying yes sir or yes ma'am to the instructors, but when it comes to getting a job. Um, let's say once you get a black belt. If you are able to put that you have a black belt on your resume, that'll help you out later on when, because now they'll see, okay, well, he was disciplined enough to get a black belt, or she was disciplined enough to get a black belt, so maybe they'll be disciplined enough with this job. You know, if, they, if they're busy doing something, then they can't be doing other things. So it's all about keeping them positive. Um, I have three kids myself, and my goal is to keep them busy so that they don't have time to do everything else that's outside. I teach classes uh, six days a week. So if my students are here in class with me, they're not getting in trouble. If they're doing something else, if they're playing basketball, if they're playing soccer, if they're playing uh, football, it doesn't matter what they're doing as far as it's positive. If they're doing something, then that means they're not doing anything bad. I wanted to learn martial arts and learn how to fight. I like the sparring 
and the NACBA, which is following principles. We do different roles just in case we're taken down by somebody. We know how to roll and protect ourselves. Part of it teaches me how to like motivate myself whenever I'm feeling down. My friend, his name's LJ. I met him like when I was really little and we started doing everything together. We, did, we went to the same school. We like had every same after school activity. And so I, when he started, my mom saw what he was doing. So she got me started too. I started when I was five and I'm 11 now. So around six years. Like the weapons and the kind of techniques that we do. So everything was really fun. Like if I don't want to do something, I'll just say no, no, or like tell a teacher or just walk away. My instructor, he, like whenever I get in trouble at school, I used to like go to him and I get a punishment from him. And so I learned like if I don't want to get a punishment from him, which is like the higher rank I go, the worse the punishment is. So I know to be good in school, so I don't have to deal with any punishments. You get to learn self-defense, and I like that it keeps me safe. My brother and one of my friends would always go, and I'd be left behind, so I've always wanted to go with them. Interesting story. With us in the studio, we have martial arts students, Sebastian Green and Jalen Blanc. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Kuk Su Wan is a complete martial arts system focused on emphasizing self-discipline, respect, and education. How has this martial arts program helped you to be a better student in school, Sebastian? Um, so as I said in the video, um, the higher rank I go, the more punishment I have. And so at each belt, like I guess there's a certain, a certain um, category that you learn in life. So at my rank right now, I learned humility. And so I've learned to discipline myself and know when not to do something and when to do something. There's a time and place for everything. And what would you tell another youth who may be thinking about joining Kuksu? That it's a good sort, like a good, um, a good way to protect yourself. And you can learn a lot from it. Like if you get in fights a lot at school, it can help you channel your anger and make sure you don't get as ma in as many fights and you can keep your focus in school and learn a lot more things. Great. And Jalen, what makes Kuksu Wan a fun program? Um, the fact that we get to do techniques, um, staff spins, not bub, which are falling principles, learn how to roll, and they make the program, they make the program fun because as we're doing those different techniques and sorts of activities, they put some sort of game into it, and I like it a lot. Like what kind of game? Um, usually when we're warming up <coughs> and exercising, they'll have us do, like, well, our favorite is bunny hops. They'll have us do bunny hops all the way down and back after, like, every exercise that we do. Okay. And how many medals do you have? Um, I have around 36 medals. Whoa, 36 medals. That's, that's a lot. Well, thank you both for stopping by and sharing this valuable information with our audience. You're welcome. There you have it. These are the next generation karate kids. So watch out, Will Smith. The Kuk Su Wan School has done an excellent job with teaching youth life skills, setting a wonderful example that other schools and organizations can follow to ensure that all our children can have a better future. For more information about the martial arts program, visit www.kswdcva.com. Coming up next, we'll find out what's so special about a trailblazing youth ministry. Stay tuned. Tick, 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 tick,
Loss of heat waves. Tick. Heat waves. Tick. Severe droughts. Tick. 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 Devastating. Devastating hurricane. Tick. 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 Our future is up to you. Tick. Go to fightglobalwarming.com while there's still time. Mom! Mom! What? You can't find Ichabod. What? You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Friends, anyone, think before you post. Welcome back. We're speaking with young Washingtonians about the purpose of a youth ministry. Many have heard conflicting information and are unsure what to believe. The following segment addresses those issues. Yolanda Wright, and I am the director of Trailblazers Ministry, the Family Life Center. We are here to educate and equip the children about Christ and how God wants to work in their lives um, and how to live a Christian life um, outside of coming to church. How to live with Christ on the basketball court, um, in class in their regular school classes, at home. We have other programs to build their confidence about who they are and letting them know who they are and God and their self-esteem. One of the programs that we do with the young women is called the Young Ladies Tea. Um, and in that program, basically, the girls learn um, tea etiquette and we usually have a speaker who speaks to them about the inner beauty that God has given them to build up the um, inner beauty so they're not always looking at the outside. I think they get enough of uh, that from the regular media, but we try to promote the inner beauty and being Christ-like. My name is Terrence Norfless and I'm a teacher here at Trailblazers. One of the strengths of not only what we do in Trailblazers but other activities that kids can be involved with is they learn life lessons and principles. So you have character development. Um, you can build confidence by accomplishing something and meeting your goals or just seeing how you are able to learn and able to um, also build up social networks and uh, your interactions with other children, learning how to either go along with the crowd or learning how to stand out from the crowd and all that that entails. So it's a lot of character development, social development, and of course here in church, spiritual development as well. Adults can have a great impact on kids. Um, I think about my own childhood and I think about the youth leaders who were in my life, who I could have gone another direction. I could have, you know, been pregnant at an early age, but it was those youth leaders who took me on different youth activities, whether it was traveling, whether it was going with them singing or going to the movies or going to dinner. They took me places to expose me to a plethora <laughs> of things and activities that for some youth who lived in my same community had not been exposed to. Um, and their, their parents didn't have that knowledge of it. So when you have youth leaders who have been exposed to ice skating, going swimming, and some of our kids don't have that. So when they come here, and then when we travel or we do things um, here, you know, some kids have never been bowling. So they come here to the Family Life Center, they have the opportunity to go bowling. Some kids have never been swimming and don't know how to swim, but because of the connections they make here, they have the opportunity to go swimming, to learn how to swim, to learn how to behave when they go to McDonald's, as opposed to learning how they're gonna behave when they go to Ruth Chris. Trailblazers is a program, it's a mini church service for kids, equivalent to children's church and other churches. We serve kids between the ages of five and 12. We do it every first, second, and third Sunday during the 1045 service while the adult church is going on. And what we do is we have a service, we break down into classes, and it's another way of engaging kids in Christian education while they're here. Well, as a member of the church, I, I knew that I had somewhat of an ability to teach, and there's an interest that I had. I've 
in my history I've worked with youth before in different um, enrichment programs. So I figured I'd put that to work, good work here. And so far it's been rewarding and I hope the kids will say the same. Lord, I praise your name for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we worship you for your mercy and your grace. Now that's an amazing youth ministry. Here to share more about the benefits of youth ministries and recreational activities is Christopher Taylor. Welcome to Teen Youth Summit, Christopher. Oh, thank you. Now, what caused you to want to become engaged in positive recreational activities as a youth? All right. If you want the truth, uh, my weight. Uh, a couple of years ago when I was in elementary school, I was overweight and I had a lot of chances of probably catching diabetes or high blood pressure and stuff like that. So I decided, instead of sitting on the couch and eating food, rather just go out and stop playing basketball and football. So by the time I got to high school, I tried out for football. And I pretty liked, I liked it a lot because every day after school, just lift weights, work out, go outside, run out, run around a track. But then sometimes it was kind of hard, but I still accomplished the goals of working out. Then that's when I joined the rec up the street from my house, went up there every day after school after I did my homework and my chores, played basketball, came in the house by like, when you say eight or seven, seven-ish, I don't know, but I just know I love to play basketball. Football is okay, but mm, basketball is the best because it helped me burn fat way more faster. Okay. And what would you tell another teenager who may be thinking about joining a youth program or sports activity? Uh, I would just tell them just go for it for yourself and you know how some kids, their parents, like they may have a father that loves football and may want to push them to do football and they might not like it. So all I'm going to say is go for your own uh, decision. So if you want to play baseball, do baseball. You want to do football, you want to do soccer. Anything as long as it's up to you to do whatever sport you want so you can be happy at it. So in other words, you're saying they should do it because they want to do it versus their parents want them to do it. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Okay. And what advice would you give to a parent in order to keep their teen out of trouble? Mm, give them some leeway on weekends only, though. Weekdays should be nothing but school and work. And like I said, if you want to exercise, like recreation or things like that, going to recreation is another the street from the home. But at least Saturday night, you should at least give them some leeway on a Saturday because that's the only time they have to, you know, during their childish, during their, uh, childish days to have fun, which is on a Saturday. Yeah, that's all I can say. So you're saying that parents should like reward good behavior and yes, okay, that's what I want and accomplishments. To say. Mm -hmm. Well, right. Chris, thank you for joining us. I'm sure our audience gained quite a bit of valuable information. Thank you. Now that you have learned more about the benefits of joining a recreational center and youth ministry, a good way to find the best choices is to visit your local recreation centers or church. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org. Hey, Sarah. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Been doing like I taught you. Love the new tattoo, Sarah. Dude, that's Sarah. Sarah. The girl in the pink shirt, that's the girl I was telling you about. Theater two on your left. Hey, Sarah, what color underwear today? Hey, Sarah, so when are you gonna post something new? Anything you post online, anyone can see. So think before you post. We try to promote the inner beauty and being Christ-like. Um, and then with the boys, we're um, trying to institute a similar program called um, Blazing with Trails, 
where the boys are going out and um, building up their um, internal personality, hiking and through hiking and um, ropes course and things like that, but also like connecting it to, you know, their faith. And really that's what's gonna make benefit them. It's just not, I'm growing up to be this man or I'm growing up to be this woman, but I'm growing up to be this person of faith and believing that, you know, whatever obstacle that I incur, I um, am able to overcome it because of Christ that lives in me. I think the value of having a positive influence cannot be understated. Um, there's nothing like quality one-on-one -on -one time if you can afford to do that. And I think that's where mentors uh, serve a large role, particularly when you're serving um, or working with a child that doesn't necessarily get all of that much uh, quality one-on-one -on -one time with an adult. Um, it is our goal to be able to deposit in the kid something that's positive and right. And so we work on ourselves as well. Uh, but through that one-on-one -on -one, through mentoring or through programs, it's the positive influence. It's not just adults saying, you're not this, you're not this, I wish you were this, or you're just like so-and-so. That's another way of encouraging them to be who they believe they can be and who we think they can be, and of course, who we think they should be. We as adults, we have our own ideas, what we think might be fun for a child, but it's always helpful to get their own opinion but it, it's always good to bring them into a world where it's designated for them they understand that this is here for them and we try to not cater to what they want but also to what they need and uh, hopefully develop them that way and it's more than just occupying their time it's enriching their time and developing them as well they're definitely helpful i think um, one of the strengths of not only what we do in trailblazers but other activities that kids can be involved with is they learn life lessons and principles so you have character development um, you can build confidence by accomplishing something and meeting your goals or just seeing how you are able to learn. Welcome back to Teen Youth Summit. For our last segment of Ways to Stop Youth Violence, we'll explore the creative and effective methods used to decrease violence amongst youths within our communities. As we all know, as a youth growing up in today's society, there are a lot of challenges that you may face in your lives. We recognize that it is important to talk about the issues openly and freely. Today, the summit will provide teens a voice to articulate these issues in their community and with their peers. Here to share more about the topic of youth violence are students and teens, Christopher, Diamond, and John. Christopher, how has some of your parents' guidance helped to keep you from going down the wrong path in life? Well, let's see. I had a, got a lot of guidance from both of my parents. Uh, different from both of them. Uh, one with my mother done with being in school and her staying on top of me. And one with my father making sure I stay out of trouble, hanging with my wrong family members. Uh, uh, I tried my best to listen to both of them because you know I'm still young and I'm a boy. And most of the time the males, young males, don't want to listen, but I managed to listen. So now I'm in a good place with both of my parents and have a strong relationship with both of them and I can go to both of them for anything. And I received a lot of help from both of them throughout my life. Okay, good. And how old are you? 19. 19 years old. And Diamond, do you think that a lack of love and attention from the home environment contributes to violence? Yes, I do. Because I feel like if you're not getting the love and the care that you should be getting inside of your house, then you're gonna go out and try to find it, like on the streets. If like, okay, let's say if you have like in your house, mm -hmm. your mom is there for you, your dad is there for you. There, you're you're going out with them everywhere, opposed to someone who parents doesn't have time for them. They're always working. You know, you're gonna like seek attention. You're gonna go out to find attention, and you're just gonna get in a lot of trouble because your parents aren't there to support you mm -hmm. as much as they should be. And that goes to my next question for John. Do you think that positive adult role models and proper discipline helps to decrease violence amongst our youth? Uh, absolutely. Um, growing up, you know, I've 
always had a sort of rebellious spirit in a way, but uh, my dad heard that he was in the military, so um, he grew up, you know, without his father, but he still had the discipline and the ability to raise me right. So uh, I think that that in in terms of a household environment, the ideal model would be if you have both parents in the household. Um, you know, as a young boy, you want to look up to someone who, who's a positive role model. And if you don't have the father figure in your life, it's difficult. It's not impossible. Because my dad did it. He was still a positive role model, despite the fact that he didn't have a father. But, you know, the ideal model that you want in the household is, you know, mother or father or, you know, or just two parents um, in the household that will, that will help, that will, that will be a guidance for the, for the child, for both, for both children. Um, you know, a male needs to look up to his father, a woman needs to look up to her mother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in today's society, a lot of times we have the mothers raising the kids by herself. And it's really difficult and, and it's tough. And uh, the fathers aren't stepping up as much. But they, um, if, I believe that if you have a two-parent household, it's stronger overall. And I'm not saying that if you don't have that, it won't. The child won't grow up to be successful, or he won't, or she won't be um, successful. But if you have a two-parent household, a strong household with both parents, that will keep you out of the streets. That will keep you in clubs. That will that will make you do chores in the house. That will be there, you know, to say, all right, you know, rake the leaves or mm -hmm. um, clean up your room. You know, if, if it's just one parent, um, you know, you get it's harder. It's harder. Yeah. Well, Christopher Diamond. Yeah. And John, thank you both. Yeah. Thank you all for stopping by. It's good to see the efforts of youth like yourself making a meaningful difference in our community. So thanks again. The commitment of Teen Youth Summit Show and other local youth programs are remarkable joint efforts to restore opportunities for teens. This work will not be accomplished all at once, but will take place gradually and over time. The Youth Summit programs provide teens with the education, strategy, and empowerment they need to do something to improve their lives and the communities that they live in. For more information about the youth recreational centers and programs in your community, please visit the Department of Parks and Recreation website at www.dpr.dc.gov. We'll be right back. Look, I had a rough day at work. I don't need you hassling me about my smoking. Hey. I just smoke when I'm out with my friends. Yeah, cigarettes are expensive. But I work, I pay my bills, I can afford it. You know, you gotta die something. Might as well be cancer. What are you passing along to your kids? Quit for yourself, for your family, for your legacy. For free help, call or go online. <coughs> just a little cough. Nothing to worry about. Once you post your image online, you can't take it back. Anyone can see it. Family, friends, anyone. Think before you post. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoa. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor, too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? Well, this concludes this episode of Teen Youth Summit, a youth-oriented production. I'm your host, Tony Randolph, and we are glad you joined us to learn about current issues facing today's teens and ways to stop youth violence in order to enhance our lives and our community, ultimately preparing youth for the future. We hope these stories were informative, inspiring, and helpful to you. For more information on local youth programs and recreational activities in our community, check out our website at www.tenyouthsummit.com. Until next time, remember, there are no failures, only lessons learned. So make sure your voice is heard.